um, uh, and taking UE projects and making them something that can actually render the final pixels for your yes. content. So let me, uh, let me uh, um, uh, introduce the co-founder of Blur Studios, the director of the first Deadpool, the creator of Love, Death, and Robots, and the upcoming Prime Anthology, Secret Level. Please welcome to the stage our friend Tim Miller. Yeah. Hey, Tim. How's it going, man? I don't know. All right, Tim. I swear this is not going to take long. I'm not going to go back and relive my childhood. I, I, I know. <laughs> I swear. I know. It's almost over. We're almost over. Um, so you two know each other, yeah? Yeah. Yes, I've, hired, I've tried to hire Wes about We've known each other for like, over 10 years. Like, it was ruined because I have been, I have looked up to Tim since I was, you know, That, that, that just makes me I, I know. I'm old, sorry. Man. I'm sorry. I'm Come sorry. on. But you were always been doing some this just incredibly inspiring stuff. And so I remember coming to you and saying, hey, here's my short room. Can I make one of your, <laughs> one of your things? And you said no, actually. You said I had to start from the bottom and work way up. You know, cool. Yeah. And that's, that's when I went up and did the mix. I hate these guys. <laughs> They're like, no, I want to direct. And I'm exactly. like, yeah, sure you do, kid. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so Tim, just for those, those that don't know you or Blur, tell us a little bit about the studio. Um, let's not talk about Tim. Let's talk about Blur because Blur is awesome. Um, I just, it was a simple dream. You want to do creatively interesting projects as an artist, and I thought that unless I started my own studio, unless I had the freedom to make really stupid financial decisions, um, I would not be able to uh, follow my creative dreams. And, and I always wanted the, ch the, the choice to say, look, we can pay everybody, but we're not going to make any money, <laughs> but this is fucking cool. Let's it's worth it. it. Um, and to do that, I needed that freedom, and so Blur was born. And it's a terrible short-term strategy, let me tell you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, but it's oh, an oh, excellent long-term one. Honestly, I think you, know, you did a lot of game cinematic trailers. I think you inspired a lot of our gaming industry as well as the movie industry as to what's possible. What's possible and also yeah. set the look for the future of games. Many games now look like the cinematic stuff that you made all them years ago. I know. I hated it when we would do cinematic stuff and, and the game community would go, fuck you, you you're cheating us. The game doesn't look that's like not that. what the game looks like. But now, now things are now different. Now it looks like that. So, so you just announced Secret Level at Gamescom and fans of the, all the games that are featured there are super excited to, to see the series come to the, to, the, to the streaming screen. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how that came about? Um, it's a pretty fucking simple idea, really. It was just like, hey, let's do Love, Death, and Robots with video games. Um, and luckily, we had had almost 30 years in the industry, and we'd built up a lot of trust through collaboration with publishers and game developers. They knew that we wouldn't screw up their IP. They knew that we would take their input and care about the experience for the gamers, as well as what we were doing uh, in the pre-rendered stuff. So we had this trust. So when we went to people and said, hey, you know this IP that you've spent you know, millions of dollars building up? We're just going to borrow it and drive it around the block a little bit and tell some new stories with your characters and your worlds. And luckily, people trusted us to do that. Makes so, sense. Though. So you know, rela related to that, you know, people may have noticed in the trailer, there's an epic OG game in there, Unreal Tournament. And uh, we've worked really closely together. In fact, the, the, the story goes back a long time, like 10 years ago when I started working at Epic. When I tried to hire Kim. <laughs> no, I <didn't. laughs> like, I, I really felt that to, to sort of kick off this, uh, this transmedia transition for the industry, the, the studio, the best studio to work with would be this company that works with games companies and works with film companies. So I went to Blur, and I tried to persuade Tim into using the engine. And obviously, the, it, it didn't happen then but the seed was planted, and this was an opportunity to work together, learn something from Blur that all, everybody in this audience benefits from. Yeah. The animation tools, the lighting tools, they're all getting better because of this partnership that we've had. But um, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was good fun for your artists. Took a little while for everybody to get into it, but I think the results are great. I, I mean, I, look, I think it's the right time because what you're getting in real time is as good uh, as anything we can do in, in non-real time. And of course, some aspects of the process are so much more enjoyable because, the, I mean, the artists were fucking giddy running around the studio yeah. because they're not waiting two hours a frame. Um, they're waiting, uh, you know, 20, yeah. you get 24 a second uh, yeah, or 30. You know, the, thing, the thing I love about it, because, you know, we do all our cinematic content at Epic in, in, in the engine, is that it's sort of immersion in the content. Yeah. Because you can fly anywhere, you can change the lights, you can pose the characters, you feel like you're inside it, just like That's, live action. That was my experience. Yeah. It felt like live action, because on, on, on set, we'll kind of go to a location, 
you know, and then we'll kind of move the camera over here and find something that we never even thought of before when you're planning it. And so that chance to be spontaneous is like you're always looking for happy accidents to make something feel real. I know it sounds all crunchy granola, but there's this thing called flow that people yeah, talk about, sure. and, and it allows you to stay in yeah. the flow. You, know? you don't have to go get a coffee while you wait for a rent. Hey, um, we should... Uh, we, I don't think the audience wants to hear us just chat forever. Yes, so they do. We should probably <laughs> yes, show them do. something. Tim, do you want to explain what they're about to see? Okay, so Kim told you. He did. I uh, said, hey, you want to be in Secret Level? And Kim said, yes, but only, motherfucker, if you do, uh, if you do Unreal Tournament and Blur has to do it. You have to do it at your place and you have to build an Unreal Pipeline, to which I said, great, because I've been waiting for a reason to do it. And Epic said, we won't let you fail, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful thing. So, and they didn't. They were incredibly supportive. The artists had such a great time. So we did a great Unreal Tournament. I'm so proud of the, of the whole series, but Unreal Tournament in particular. And we decided that just for Unreal Fest, we would like to do something just for the Unreal fans. So in our homage to Unreal Tournament, we build the opening fly-in to Leandro Stadium, yep. um, as it was in the game, but just a little better. <laughs> and then, so, oh wait, so Wes told me I gotta say this. So what you're about to see is all in Unreal, mm -hmm. Final Pixel. Amazing. All done in a very short time with a very small but very focused and crack a great, a great Navy team. Seals That's of So awesome, production. so dedicated. Okay, let's roll it. <laughs> 